See, it looks bad this way. It looks better this way. So. How come I look better than you? I don't know, honey. I don't know. Let's just go ahead and talk. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm back with my surgeon dad. And today we have some life advice outside of just setting the camera up. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so basically, I read this book, The Fighting Decade, and it says that your 20s are the most like influential, impactful time of your life. Basically says you're not supposed to waste your 20s like a lot of people do. Women have to be especially careful and then she lays out the science of like once you turn 30, your eggs literally start to decline in quality. So a lot of people socially ignore that fact, but biologically, you know, it's a thing. So basically I'm 25. That means that the next five years of my life, I have a, a time to make a big difference in my life. So that's what this video is going to be about. Life advice for the next five years. Yeah. You're 25. Under 30. Going Before to 30. 30. Now let's just say you're going to 30. So basically, um, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff going on with uh, the world and with you and with your biological clock and with your chronological clock and all these competing things. And it's never easy. So um, sometimes you just have a plan and you might have to change the plan. I mean, because it's that's just not going right to go that way. What? I'm doing that right now. I mean, change your plan. I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you are if you don't perceive that you're going someplace, uh, then you change your plan. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily force it, but you just uh, adapt to uh, the situation at the time. And there, there's so many different uh, variables that, uh, you know, to try to map things out are very difficult. I tried doing Alaska Friends. I applied to, I got a grant, and then I applied to a program. They didn't even look at my video. I applied to another grant, got into the top 20 like semifinalists, just never heard back from them. So now I'm looking for a job. What career advice do you have for me? You, um, <laughs> you, uh, it's just, uh, you, you gotta have some of a goal in mind, somewhat adapt, but more importantly, you have to, uh, surround yourself with, um, people who are going to further you, further you and your goals. And uh, I think that that's why you're going to New York to see where that is. I think that uh, you spent time in Alaska. Alaska's been good. It's been nurturing, but you can't. When you're young, you, you gotta you gotta move. Uh, you gotta get outside your comfort zone. You gotta you gotta travel. You gotta meet different people. You gotta be put in different situations because that's how you grow. And they don't all and they don't always have to be pleasant experiences. That's when you learn the most. Um, that, that's when you learn the most. And trust me, some of my most unpleasant experiences have uh, molded me. So uh, uh, going through them, it sucked. But looking back on them, it was, uh, it was good. It was, it was good. So uh, get out there and uh, you know, adapt and overcome and, uh, and live your life. Yeah, that's like one thing. It's like I wasn't just doing nothing, but I no, have no. my digital portfolio. No, right, 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 right. So, um, so you know, the the bottom line is uh, you, you got to be able to support yourself, and you got to, and to the extent possible, like doing what you're doing. But ultimately, you have to be able to support yourself. Um, I think that uh, you know the new generation, the, the materialism isn't there like it was when I was there. You know, that was how people gained success. I think that that's crazy. I think uh, materialism is, um, you know, we all need some material things, but basically we are, um, okay. Wasteful. No, we're spiritual beings in a material world. And what we need to do is sometimes we let that materialism get the best of us. And, you know, we, we you know, the, the spiritual aspect uh, suffers. I think that it, it's important to nurture the spirit, not the material. But I mean, obviously, there's a balance. Um, Me and Kelly have had this exact conversation. The important thing is the immaterial, and the no, people that's who the, realize the immaterial are like on a higher right energy, like right. wavelength or something. Right, because when you own stuff, it ends up owning you, and I I can attest and you never to that. own anything. And like, you don't own anything. Literally, everything no, no, comes no. and goes. No, everything comes and goes, and so <laughs> I think that there are certain things you need. But I think that we, uh, you know, somebody once said that the definition of a house is a place you store your stuff uh, when you're out getting more stuff. And it's just so true. Um, 
you know, I've recently transitioned, as you're well aware, to a different job and a different situation. And I'm in a one bedroom, a one bedroom apartment <laughs> after being in, you know, big houses. And Your couch with all for that. at least three months was a blow up mattress. That's right. That's right. So, so what I've learned from that and what I've taken from that is, is that I'm living my life, not living my possessions. Okay. Um, because, you know, it just seemed like when I was doing the possession stuff, I was always going to the store to, to either buy something, take something back, get something fixed. And I had the big houses, so I was going to Lowe's or Home Depot all, every single weekend and using my life time and my life force to fix up, you know, the house or, you know, there was always something that needed to be fixed. I was at the car wash the other day, okay? So I washed the car because it had to be washed. But, you know, the, the, the metaphor for that is there are people who are at the car wash who take better care of their cars than they do themselves. And that's just fucking crazy because, you know, um, I used to be the same way, you know. take uh, You know, if there was the littlest thing on my car, it just drove me crazy. You know, cars just a means of transportation. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's an insane... Uh, there, there's nothing wrong with pride of ownership, but sometimes we take it a bit too far. And and literally, I, I see these people that take their their cars are in better shape than they are, and they need to turn that around. You actually have a family full of mentally uh, atypical people. <laughs> you have you have a family with interesting mental dynamics. Well, I mean, everybody. If you if you dig deep into anybody. You, you'll find craziness. I mean, I come from a family of alcoholics, and, and that, you know, because we're Finns, and Finns uh, are alcoholics. Not all Finns, obviously, but <laughs> a good proportion of them are. I'm an alcoholic. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and, and that brings its own issues. But uh, on top of that, uh, you know, if you do certain things, uh, you can take those problems and turn them into assets and uh you, you know you realize things and and um you, you work through them and uh like i said it's just it's just an evolving process that uh ultimately makes you better so i agree yeah so how do you maintain your mental health because you're in a high stress job how well do I you work on that i work out um i make sure that uh my schedule's not crazy anymore. My schedule used to be crazy. I've uh, I've put a limit on my schedule. Uh, I, I I learned how to say no. Uh, that's one thing I never I was very bad at. I'm very good at that. Yeah, I mean, well, I was bad at it because I grew up in a society where you know you you know if somebody you know there were expectations and you didn't say no. Yeah. Um, you know you, you you I assumed too many too many responsibilities, too many jobs, too many obligations, and. Uh, that drove me crazy. I still probably don't say say it enough, but I, I say it pretty quickly now. If I can't uh, if I can't do something. You said something recently, which I work on a lot, is you're just a stimuli, or you're just we're receptors. You're a receptor. We we are receptors of stimulus. So as a highly sensitive person, I already know this. So how are you working on not being just a receptor and being more mindful about? In taking stimulus. Well, uh, you have to. I have to uh, choose what uh, stimuli that I allow my receptors to interact with. And, and that, how do you do that mindfully in your life? Well, okay. So, uh, like I said, I I try to get as much stress out off as possible. I work out. Um, I take care of my mind. I do readings. Um, I'm in a 12-step program. That that's the most va valuable thing that's ever happened to me. Um, and I'll just say it, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I think that uh, if you do the 12 steps, even normal people should do that because. And I, also, I, way more people are alcoholics than they ever think. Well, I mean, yeah. So I didn't realize I was until you know I had uh, I had I had some sort of bottom, uh, which was uh, about a decade ago, and then uh, and then I found out, but. Or I, I admitted to myself and, and I sought help. But again, I think that normal people would benefit from a 12 step program. That, that's spirituality, that's a whole spiritual, it's a wisdom tradition. Uh, you, you, get to, to, you, you get to know yourself. You have somebody who's 
in a, in a position not of authority, not of telling you what to do, but as a as a guide who will guide you through those things and uh, those I those things. To talk to probably, well, I mean, it, then you're in a community. You're in a community of like community uh, is so important. I think the the community of people in a room that are non-judgmental and they're there to help you and everybody's on the same type of journey. I mean, we're different places that journey. Some of the most intense people I've met in my life have been been there. And if you look at them societally, um, they're, some of you might look and say, well, that's that's a low, low societal person. And then, but spiritually, they're they're higher than anybody else. So uh, and then you can see some of those people that are like the Yodas, and you say, "Man, I want to be like that." No, I mean, I'm not kidding. And you know, there's there's just sometimes the things that come out of people's mouth, uh, it just just blows you away. I mean, you're just going, "Wow!" And sometimes that's my higher power speaking to me through somebody else's words. And then sometimes when I'm sharing, sometimes things that come out of my mouth, I'm going, "Wow!" Uh, you know, if I was to think on it. That wouldn't, but when it comes out of my mouth, it's just profound. And I'm just like, wow, I, I can't believe that I had a realization. I had That's a actually why I've started like really trying right. more because I used to get so blocked by right. being like, oh, I don't know the right thing to say. Right. But then I'm like, sometimes it literally just comes through, you know. Well, so you know, in, uh, in the rooms of AA, whenever something like that happens, we call it a God moment. You know, that's where, you know, God or your higher power, whatever you choose to believe in. Uh, is speaking to you. The universe is speaking to you. The multiverse. Uh, Rick Man, and we're Morty. more. You're more spiritual than I thought you were. <laughs> Rick and Morty is talking to me. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's incredible. Um, and you know, sometimes I bring people home that your mom looks at like, what the hell? Is with these people? I mean, they're felons. They've people been people in jail. There've been people who've been you know uh, in trouble, but then they turn that around in an incredible fashion and become you know great people and everyone has a different starting place I think no, the problem with our society right, 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 right now right. is no one takes the time to be empathetic and right. try to be like oh just because i grew up in this area and i literally don't ever see anyone like that like people are re- who they are for a reason yeah we and we can't judge we we cannot yeah. judge because we do not know what yeah. somebody else has uh been through so and i'll just i'll just leave one example that when i i met this one guy and he was just a cruel guy. I mean, he, you know, he was just came in and he was mean and, and he was, he was tough. And you got to know the guy, you know, the reason he was tough because that was his survival mechanism. I mean, he was, he was in a tough situation getting beat up all the time. That's the only way he knew how to survive. Taking him out of that, him realizing that he turned that around. So we judge people on their appearance. We judge people on their actions. And, and some people need to be, to be judged, but you also got to look beyond that. And, and, uh, a little bit deeper because people are uh, how their environment made them be a lot of times and there are a whole lot of people who have had it a whole lot rougher than people can imagine we gotta i gotta get going okay uh, four minutes four minutes in order to have a family you have to have a partner you right. picked a really good one Mom. oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah well that was uh that was that wasn't me. That was uh, fate, heaven, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, I was gonna ask account. you advice on how to pick a good one. Yeah, that because... just happened. That just happened by the grace of uh, the grace of uh, the universe, the higher power of God, whatever you want to say. Uh, that was um, that was uh, <laughs> some people might even consider it a cosmic joke <laughs> on her. <laughs> so so anyway. Uh, yeah, that that was. Uh, She's paying for something in a past life. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Just that, kidding. So, so anyway, um, do you have no advice on that? I, I, I you know, <laughs> I, I really don't. I mean, that that. What about the qualities? Anything? <laughs> well, I mean, you have to be compatible. But, I mean, it's sort of like you know, I met your mom the first time I laid. Because in my opinion, I think that's like kind of the most important thing in life. Because if you're, even if you're like. You know, either friends or like close relationships, they can literally show you an entire new world just if you are invited to theirs. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's like your mom compliments me. I'm crazy in a certain way, and she's not. Okay, so she uh, she just takes all that stuff and just uh, smooths it out. You know. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't actually ask you for relationship advice because you yeah, literally you just say you know, every boyfriend that I'm dating, you're like, oh, I really like him. I like him. <laughs> I mean, I like. I mean, so so I can see through a whole lot of these things. I mean, a lot of these things guys that you dated 
are young and stupid, but so so was I at that age. Okay, so uh, yeah. not so everybody's... you come from a more empathetic place, not like a helpful place where well, mom will be like, mm. yeah, mom's better than that because I mean, uh, I was an idiot when I was that age. So whenever I compare them to me, and uh, even though you know I was in medical school, I was a doctor and all that stuff, doesn't mean I wasn't an idiot. So uh, you know the the guys you've that I seen you with are good guys and they're not idiots. <laughs> I mean, they... <laughs> so, maybe I set too too low of a bar for yeah, them. Yeah, you do. You, know? <laughs> you really but, do. But I'm empathetic and, and I see I see potential. I see potential. Here you go. Good. We're done. Okay, good. thank you. Bye-bye.